Hello everyone, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and let's do a complete beginner's guide to Dyson Sphere Program, shall we? I've been playing this game, doing it on stream, having a blast with it. I'm still um, early in the game, but I've learned so much from very kind people and through my own horrifying trial and error about how to play the beginning of the game. And I want to explain some basics, fundamentals, tips and tricks, interpreting the UI, and everything about starting out in Dyson Sphere program so that you can fire it up and enjoy the game because there's really so much to unpack. It's kind of one of those games similar to Factorio, similar to Satisfactory, where it's like the deeper you go, the more you see that you can build and the grander the scale becomes. It just gets more and more exciting. It's perhaps a little bit intimidating at first, and if you've never played an automation game before, um, this one might seem overwhelming or even if you have because i'm coming from factorio and satisfactory there are new elements in this dyson sphere program does a really good job of iterating on existing concepts that you would understand but then also inserting its own idiosyncrasies and mechanics that turn things uh not on its head but at least you know, make things different for a player who is experienced with other automation games that I ran into difficulties with, and I'm glad that I got sorted uh, by people on YouTube and in the stream. So what I'm going to do is fire up a brand new game, and we're going to play from the very start of a new world in Dyson Sphere program. And you can play along with me so that you can learn the game, or you can just watch and see if this is the kind of game that you want to play. So I'm not going to spoil anything for you. I'm not going to do a min-max. This is the fastest way to do anything or to show you the perfect way to build a factory uh, with the most efficiency and the, the least amount of space taken up and, you know, the best output and all this stuff. Instead, I'm rather just going to give you the basics and the building blocks for the fundamentals so that you can kind of uncover the tech tree and the secrets of the game at your own pace so here we go we're going to start a new game and i'm not really going to do anything with this um, i'm not going to change any of the settings i'm just going to take this random seed keep the number of stars the same the resource multiplier i'm not going to change i'm not going to put it to sandbox mode because i'm going to play just the default game and i'm going to click start game i am playing this on the Xbox PC Game Pass on PC in 2023. Welcome to the actual universe. You may find it's different from our homeland. Should you be able to adapt to the laws of physics in a short time, I am your advisor and will help you through this mission. Fantastic. My goodness, we're close to that sun. Change course. What are you doing? I guess we're okay. So you start this game out in this little spaceship, and... Everything here is yours. As one of Cosmo, and the pioneer of the Dyson Sphere program, you will explore this cluster step by step. By using the resources here to construct the Dyson Sphere to provide energy for the center brain to maintain homeland, starting from scratch. I have chosen a designated planet for you to start the mission, which has necessary resources for initial development. Now, please drive the space capsule to the planet. So what I was going to say before I was interrupted by our friend there is this game introduces you to the fact that you're in space because unlike many other building games, you are going to span multiple planets across an intergalactic scale. Now you are about to reach the designated planet. We are. Look how beautiful this planet looks from space. And here we go. Our shuttle is pulling in. A comfortable landing. We made it. 
And what's inside? This is Icarus, a lightweight industrial mecha with powerful functionality. You can use the arrow keys or right click on the destination to control its movement. In this mission, you will manipulate Icarus to travel beyond the stars and create miracles. I mean, think about that. We're going to create miracles. We're going to make Dyson Sphere to help power now try to the center the brain. Right click on it to recycle. AI. All right. So we're going to do what he says. But first, let's just talk about what we see. So in this game, it's fundamentally important to understand that you're going to be controlling this Icarus, this like transformer looking mech, which is awesome. All right. Now you can walk the Icarus around, like he said, using WASD. I'm moving the camera, scrolling in and out with the mouse wheel. You hold middle click and drag the mouse wheel uh, with the mouse wheel button pushed in to kind of rotate the camera. You can right click to give him movement commands and you'll see a little circle appear where the right click designation is. And you can also just walk him around. And now if I zoom out, you can start to see the curvature of the planet. And it feels kind of like, you know, Mario Galaxy in a way with how small this planet is, uh, but it's also awesome. Now, if I push M, I go to the map mode, okay? And this is where view mode, you can hold down the middle mouse button drag, rotate the angle of view, and hold down the right mouse button, drag to roll the angle of view, press N key to point to the front to the north pole. Okay, so if you're starting up a brand new game, view mode, slide the mouse wheel to enter the star map mode. Yes, you can. If you have not unlocked the construction menu, which will be done automatically when complete any technology research. Click the technology tree button at the bottom right of the screen to open the technology tree and activate a research. Correct. We're not researching anything. Okay, so he is um, giving us fantastic information. So if you're brand new, he's going to come in anytime you try to do stuff and he's going to interrupt you and give you all sorts of, you know, tips and tricks that are fantastic. Okay, and you'll see right here on the screen, it says new tutorial. And it's giving me all these different tutorials that we can click on to learn more information. But I just want to show you because I think this is fantastic. I can actually zoom out and go into this kind of even further galactic view of where we're at. And I can even zoom out further to see a nebula view. All right. So, I mean, or, you know, a galaxy view. This is just us within the solar system that we're in. And if we zoom out, we can see many solar systems in this massive galaxy. And then if we keep zooming in, we get to the planet that we're actually on. All right. I mean, this is how amazing the scale is. But for now, we're just a robot on this planet, Naria. Now I'm going to push M to just kind of go back to map view and then push M again and you'll get back to your Icarus, who's just chilling and doing his kind of idle animation. All right, so now we've talked about movement, and we've talked about, uh, you can also push the space bar to kind of jump a little bit with your mech. We've talked about zooming the camera around to different views. Let's go ahead and click on the background tutorial. So I'm not going to read these to you, but the, this tutorial gives you a lot of the lore of the game, the basic story. So it says here, in the future, human beings enter the ranks of advanced civilizations and the power of science and technology bring rapid development. Indeed. So people use virtual reality to iterate space and time, create a virtual universe much larger the, than the real world, and gradually transfer human consciousness to the virtual universe. So this is like a real mind bend also with the game, that we're transferring human consciousness into the virtual world into a bigger place than the actual universe for whatever reason now to do this you need a lot of computational power and the dyson sphere program is going to help harness enough energy to power the supercomputing that we need to maintain the virtual reality and this will be done by center brain and what we're trying to do is basically get enough resources to make Dyson Spheres to feed the brain. 
So it says, what's a Dyson Sphere? Um, it's something that was developed in 1960. I didn't know about this, but apparently, no, I was joking. Um, anyway, it's an imaginary space giant that can surround an entire star and harness all of the star's energy. Okay, so this is what we're trying to build. All right, is this e enormous thing. Gather, resource, command. So they told us in the tutorial that we can right-click on something to gather the resource and the mech will gather it for us. And you can also hold shift and right mouse to kind of set up a chain of events, a series of commands, as it says, that we can do, okay? And so let's take a look at that as our first step. So I'm gonna right click on this tree and you'll see that my guy like goes over and breaks it up and we get a bunch of different resources, logs, plant fuel and organic crystal. That displays in the lower left of the screen the resources that we obtain from getting this. And if you mouse over the tree, it also will tell you right away that you get 10 wood. But that's not showing you everything. It's just showing you one of the resource types that you can get. So let's kind of take a moment and look at the screen itself. So our mech is in the middle. Here's the research um, or the shuttle that they want us to break apart. In the bottom right, okay, you're going to get this planet thumbnail. And it tells you that you can basically push M to go to the map, which we did. Um, you can push N to lock the camera to the North Pole if you want. You'll notice that there's these amazing, look at that sunrise, night and day cycles in the game. They are just, you know, um, not necessarily cosmetic because you can get solar panels, but don't worry about it too much. Time is not a factor uh, for us, especially with our first game. We're not rushed. We can just chill and enjoy. And this opens the star map if you can click on this you can see that we're in a tropical zone um, and you can see how long day is going to last you can get our coordinates in the lower left in the center of the heads up display or the ui you'll see different commands and power gathering this is telling us that we can build different structures storage facilities production facilities transportation research dyson sphere program things environment modification, blueprints, upgrade facilities, or dismantle them. But we can't do any of this right now because we don't have the capability to do so yet. Now, this is perhaps the most important thing that is hard for me to understand coming from a game like Factorio, which is in the bottom center of the screen below your options, okay, um, you can see a big power bar. This is our mech's energy. And doing things with the mech, building things, takes power from its core. And if you run out of that power, your dude starts to move super slowly and you can hardly do anything at all. So you need to keep the mech powered, all right? It's not a huge concern at the moment, but if I push C, I bring up the mecha panel. And this is giving us a display of our mech and his fuel chamber all right so you could see some stats about your mech with the c screen which is its durability the current energy that the core has its capacity your current move speed um, how fast your core generates power from fuel in the chamber and how much fuel is in there now all of these items can actually be used as fuel for your mech. So if I mouse over my inventory, which opens automatically when I bring up my mech screen, if I mouse over the log, it tells you what it is, the name of it, what type it is. It's a natural resource. It's a fuel. It tells you it's ordinary fuel. It's obtained from trees, has low energy. It's chemical fuel type. It provides 1.50 MJ energy and it gets minus 10% fuel chamber generation, and it's gathered from trees. It tells you where you get this from. Now, what that minus 10% means is if I put this inside my core and my fuel chamber to give energy to the core, it gives 10% less because it's not great at doing that. But, okay, you can simply drag this over, left click and drag it to your fuel chamber and put it in there. Now, I don't need to use it right now, because I'm full on energy. But I can also take this plant fuel and put it over too. 
you'll notice with plants, okay, if I mouse over this, um, let me put it in my inventory and just kind of set it down and mouse over it, you'll see that this is also um, a natural resource and it's fuel, but it's minus 30% fuel generation. Not very good, but we can use it. And this is an organic crystal. Now, these are actually not easy to get or produce, and you're going to need all of these things, wood, leaves, and organic crystals later in the game. But for right now, it's okay to just put them in your fuel chamber. But typically, once you get yourself set and get coal or better resources to burn in your fuel chamber, you're going to want to sandbag all of these items in a storage chest. I'm just showing you how you can move these in there for now. All right, so we've basically explained how to right click to gather and the basic operations guide is telling us we already saw this to move around WASD, push jump to push space. Um, now it's telling you that you can fly if you unlock drive engine level one, but we don't have that yet. We'll research that soon. All right. And we'll talk about that when we get there. It's amazing. It moves you around faster, but it kills your core's power. It takes a lot of energy to use your jetpack and fly around. All right. So now let's go ahead and right click on this to dismantle the ship because they told us to do that. And you see it takes some time. the same operation to collect resources such as trees, gravel, etc. In the meantime, hold down shift and right click to give a series of commands. So we will do that. So you can see we got we hydrogen fuel rods after recycling the space capsule. Click the inventory button in the lower right corner of the screen to open the cabin to view them. Yes, okay. So you can see that we got a bunch more than just the hydrogen fuel rods. So if I push E to open my inventory, you'll see that we got three hydrogen fuel rods, okay? We got 10 iron ingots, 10 magnets. You can hold down mouse middle button drag to rotate the angle of view or slide the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. And we also got 10 Oper, uh, copper ingots. Now, you can see in the tooltip, this game is really well documented. It's one of the great things about this game. By the way, Dyson Sphere program is made by a small team. I think it was only three or five developers, and it's a Chinese development team. You're going to see some translation issues that stem from that in some of the in-game documentation. Um, so just be aware. It's not a big deal or anything like that. Um, and that being said, what this team, this small team, was able to accomplish is so tremendous. It's such a user-friendly game. So Copper Ingot, you can see that you can make these by using Copper Ore, and one piece of Copper Ore in one second in a smelter will make one ingot. So you can see the little diagram below the ingot. It shows you some ore, it shows you the arrow, and it shows you the product. Same thing for the magnet. It's telling you that a piece of iron ore in 1.5 seconds in a smelting facility can produce a magnet. Now, you can also hand make items in your inventory or your replicator, just like in Factorio. You can just craft things on the go. But the key to any of these games is you want to automate that process. Now, let's talk about shift gathering. If I shift and give several commands, I'm going to just hold shift and right click. And you can see that now I've given an order of commands and they're highlighted with these yellow circles and these arrows point to the next chore that I've given. I could just add on to this, you know, mine all of these resources if I want, pick things up, and here we go. And oh, I'm actually mining iron ore, so I'm going to stop doing that because that's going to take forever. I thought I was getting the tree. There's uh, iron ore that's just on the ground, so I'm going to pick up a bunch of that. And I don't want to do that right now. All right, so it does tell you too in your inventory on the right side of the screen. It shows you that you can split items with the right mouse button. You can shift and left click to take like all items of a similar type um, or multiple items, I should say, rather by like holding shift and selecting which stacks you want or you could control left click to take everything of that type. Now in the bottom right, you're going to see that there is uh, on the heads up display, there's like a wheel here. And this gives you more commands, the research or the technology tree, the replicator, um, your mecha panel, which is C, which we talked about, your statistics panel, which shows you your production and everything like that, your inventory, which is E, 
and your detail display, which gets better as you get more technology. So let's first talk about the tech tree because they want us to research. So I could either click this beaker or I could push T on the keyboard and you'll open up the tech tree. Now there's two panels to this and this took me forever for no reason to realize, but there's technologies itself, okay? And then there's also upgrades. These upgrades are for um, the technology you have and they're grouped. So like universe exploration, um, if you upgrade this, this helps you see veins and the distribution of veins of ore on a planet, which is super helpful. All of these in this category are upgrading your mech, and these are phenomenally helpful. Like, you can make your inventory bigger, you can move faster, um, you can get more energy in your core, you can help your drones, which are your robots that build things for you. And then these um, will help you with construction. So upgrades are incredibly important. But first, we're going to start with technology. So we begin with Dyson Sphere Program. If you know something in your tech tree, it's green. If you can learn it, it's blue. And if it's locked behind a path, it's gray like this. You can always mouse over it to see what it unlocks. I'll click on electromagnetism to get a, a blow up tooltip. And it tells you that it's going to take 10 magnetic coils to research electromagnetism. But if we do it, we get wind turbines, Tesla towers and mining machines. So we have to have this. So we're just going to click activate and we're going to start researching this. Okay. Now I'm going to push T and I'm going to close this screen and you're going to see it blew up this thing on the, the left of the screen in the upper left. This is your research queue. So right now we just have electromagnetism in our queue, but you can queue several different things. If I push T by the way, and let, let's just say go to, um, you know, uh, upgrades, and I just click on Mecha Core, okay, and I say NQ, you could see it goes behind electromagnetism on the queue. You can pause the queue if you want, um, or you can just remove things from the queue by right clicking them. Now I'm going to push T to close this up. I don't want anything in the queue right now. Now, manual research means I'm going to research it myself with the ingredients that I have in my inventory if I have this box checked. Now, I don't have any magnetic coils right now, so if I double click on this, it will allow me to try to fabricate these, okay, using the replicator. Now, also, mousing over magnetic coil tells you the recipe. It says it takes one copper ingot and two magnets to make a magnetic coil. Now, luckily, I have 10 magnets and 10 copper ingots in my inventory. Now, this is the replicator, okay, which allows you to fabricate items. So you can get to this. I'm just going to push escape to close all my windows. And you can push F to get to your replicator as well. Or in this case, you can just double click this and it will select it for you and say, hey, you want to make this. And it tells you again at the bottom of the replicator screen, this is what you want to make. These are the ingredients that it takes to make it. And if they're grayed out, it means you don't have them. But we do have them. To make these items, you have to click this big button that says produce in the lower right of the replicator queue. And you can, again, just like with your research queue, you can queue up multiple things that you want to replicate. Now, if I click this right now, I will make one, okay? Um, and by doing it one time, you actually make two. So you see how it has, says 2x down here in the bottom right corner of the magnetic coil. That's because for one ingot and two magnets, I make two coils. Now, if I want to make more than that, because I need eight, you can actually click this plus button to tell yourself to produce more, okay, of an item. So I actually want to do this four times, which will make eight, which is what I need to finish my research. So I'm going to click 4x and just click this, and it queues it up, and you can see it's right here in my replicator queue, and it's they're being made. This is taking power from my core, by the way. If I go to my core, you can see that I'm actually burning through all of the fuel that I put in there to maintain my power and refill it. We have finished electromagnetism. All right, fantastic. And you can see that basically I only have one log left, and I'm at full power. It won't burn any fuel until you use your power, and then it starts burning it and 
tries to refill it. But if you're using power at a higher rate that you're burning fuel, then you're still going to run out of power and you have to kind of wait and recharge. All right. So now, because we've completed our research, we have unlocked a new automatic mining mach machine, uh, which will collect ore for us, which is phenomenal. Of course, its capacity is limited. You may wish to transport these minerals to the smelting facility automatically. You've got that right. We're trying to automate everything in this game. Everything. That is our 100% goal. All right. So, it tells us that we've got a new tutorial, which is building a mining machine and vein coverage. You have created a mining machine to achieve ore collecting automation. Pick it up from the inventory or select it on gathering of construction menu to build it. Okay, so what they're explaining is that, like, and this is a cool thing about the game, very often um, in my inventory you'll see that I actually have a mining machine, a Tesla tower, and a wind turbine. When you research stuff, they usually give you a sample of what you can now build for free without using any resources as a reward for finishing the research process. So we got a free mining machine, basically, from researching electromagnetism. Now, let's take a look at the building mining machine and the vein coverage. So it says the mining machine can automatically gather ores, and you use the R key to rotate the machine so that its fan-shaped area covers the veins, all right? Um, now, you can hold shift to ignore snapping, okay, if you want. And in general, what you're going for, you can read the rest of this. I'm not going to, uh, for brevity's sake. You want to get as many veins as you can covered with your mining machine. So I'm going to push E to open my inventory, and I'm going to select this mining machine, all right? And I'm just going to click left. You can use left. the R key to rotate the mining machine for covering more veins. The more veins covered, the faster the ores will be gathered. If you want to ignore grit snapping, try holding down the shift key. Absolutely. So you can just left click on it from your inventory and then um, pull it out. Now, if you want to get your inventory out of the way, just push E or close the box. Now, I'm going to zoom out to make this a little easier to see, but this now I'm in build mode. When you're in build mode or construction mode, you'll see that the game is covered with like a green grid. That's just to tell you that you're in build mode. Um, you can always right click to put the item back or just like push escape, you know, to put it back in your inventory. And then you can right click to click uh, to quit construction mode. And then when the grid is gone, you're out of construction mode. But you can also push E and bring this back. Now, another thing you can do is just click on. You'll see at the bottom uh, of the HUD. The, the gathering and the power buttons have illuminated because I actually have facilities that correspond to this that I've researched. So if I click gathering or push two on the keyboard, it now gives me the option to just uh, build a mining machine from here. And I can push F1 to bring this up, right click, or I can click on this and bring this up, or I can take it from my inventory. The one in the lower right corner of this mining machine is telling me how many copies of this I have in my inventory that I can build, okay? I cannot click on this to make these from this part of the screen. I must first build them in my replicator by pushing F. So in the replicator, okay, I can build items, which is the left panel that looks like two gears, and these are all the items I know how to build. Or I can go to the Buildings tab, and I can now build all of the items that I've researched, or the buildings, rather, like the mining machine. And if I click on this, okay, it tells me that you can make a mining machine in your inventory using your replicator with two gears, two coils, two circuit boards, and four iron ingots. And that'll make this. It also tells you that if you want to make the mining um, machine and automate it that you need to make it in an assembler which is another building type that we haven't researched yet now an amazing thing about this game is you'll see how for example i need two gears to make this mining machine well if you look at my inventory i don't have any gears but what the game will do is it will queue up making gears for you if you have the available raw materials so a gear I can make one gear with one iron ingot in one second. So it'll just use my iron ingots to make the gear. 
I don't have any magnetic coils left, but it'll make this for me. And I don't have any circuit boards, but it'll make these for me, okay? So if I click on this to produce one, you'll notice that I'm just going to queue up all of the different items. Here's it's making magnets, now it's making coils, now it's making gears, and now it is making another mining facility, and it's done. And it tells you in the lower right, plus one mining machine, and then the number two right there is telling you that's how many you have total. Notice right here on the uh, building or the gathering menu in the HUD in the bottom center, it now says two mining machines that I can build. So I'm going to push F1 and build this mining machine. Now I'm going to rotate the map using the mouse wheel. And when you can't build a mining machine, it's going to be red. It's going to be like you can't build it here. And it says on the tooltip, you need resources. Now I can build it right here. Okay. And this is telling you that I'm only connected to one node of this iron ore. You see it says 1x 30 per minute. And it also displays that there's 5,572 units of iron ore on that node. But if I mouse down and now I'm on three of the nodes, it's telling me that I'm getting 90 per minute because I have three selected from this mining machine. And there's a maximum of 12.9 thousand that I'm getting. But if I move it all the way down, okay, and select six nodes, now I'm doing 180 per minute and there's like 42,000 iron available, all right? I can move this back if I want to get, and I still get six, but I'm happy with this. Now you can hold shift if you don't want to snap, if you want to be more precise, but you see right now it's snapping to the grid, the green grid that you see displayed in construction mode, but you can, you know, put it wherever you want with shift. I'm going to put it here. I'm fine with it snapping, and I'm going to left click it to build it. And now when I do that, you'll see that a robot jumps out of my pack and puts it down. In this game, you start with these One little of your robots. production facilities is not powered. You need to keep it within the power coverage area and supply it with power facilities in order to maintain its normal works. Correct. So, yes, we want to automate the gathering of iron ore, but the problem is it, it takes power to do that. So you see this flashing power plug on the mining machine. That means it's not getting any power. And if I mouse over it, it tells you that it needs 420 kilowatts and it's getting zero watts from my grid at the moment, okay? Now, if I want to make power, well, go to your inventory. We have a Tesla tower and we have a wind turbine. The wind turbine generates electricity using the wind, okay? So it's going to produce 300 kilowatts of power by itself. And this is what we are going to use to start out our power production. Now, I only have one so far, but if I click on this, all right, I can build it wherever I want. And wind turbines, unlike for perhaps in like city skyline, you can build these close by and they don't impact each other's radius. Unlike RimWorld or whatever, trees do not diminish its power. Wherever you can build it, it's getting max capacity provided that there is wind okay so the wind can increase or decrease but as long as there's wind um this is working at max capacity now you'll see that there's a blue circle around this wind turbine that i'm not yet built it's kind of blue it's ghosted and i can build it because it's blue but if i try to build it somewhere i can't like um on the the water for example it'll say it needs a foundation support i can't build it on the water but most places you can build it. You can't build it, obviously, where something else is. It'd be red, but here I can. And that blue circle of influence, if I put the mining facility within that, that means that everything in that circle is being distributed power by this wind turbine. Okay, so if I click it right here. Insufficient required items. You can click the replicator button at the bottom right of the screen to open the panel and manually replicate. Okay, so what it's telling me... You have established your first power grid. Not all power facilities has its power supply area. Use the Tesla tower to extend the area of the power grid. Okay, so what it's telling me first of all is that I built a power grid and it gave me a tutorial about the power grid itself, okay? And um, there are 
facilities that generate power, like the turbine, and then there are facilities that like store power, like batteries, and then there are facilities that transmit or send power, like our Tesla tower, which is more like a power pole that doesn't make power, but it distributes it over a wider area and helps you push your grid all around the map. So what does the grid mean? Let's talk about that. If I look at this right now, this is getting enough power, okay? So if I click on um, the mining machine, you can see that it's at 100% power satisfaction, okay? The, the power indicator is in blue. Or if I mouse over it, you can just tell by the little power wheel with the lightning bolt. If that's blue and fully filled in, that means it's getting 100% power that it needs and it's fully satisfied. As that circle around the power bolt t starts to diminish, that means it's not getting enough electricity. But it is getting enough electricity, so we're good to go. Now, that being said, if I wanted to go to my replicator and just build another wind turbine, all right, I'm going to make one more. I'm just going to click on this. You could see that I'm actually having to smelt ore into the resources right now. This is why it's taking a long time. It's building this piece by piece. This is why building from your replicator isn't always the best plan because it takes a long time. All right, now I've built another wind turbine. Now I'm going to build another wind turbine. I could, okay, make another one by pushing one to go to power on the heads up display on the options. And then I could select Tesla Tower with F1 or Wind Turbine with F4 and build another one. Another trick you can do is just hold down Shift and left click an existing building and then that will duplicate it. So now I've got another one and you can see it says it is too close to another Wind Turbine. So the game just won't even let you build it in terms of like diminishing its power. So you don't have to worry about it. You can just build it and now even though these area of influence spheres overlap, that doesn't matter. It's still going to get max power. But if I build this here, okay, or even better, if I build it over here, you see this purple dotted line or this purple dashed line. That is my power grid. So if I click this to build it, all right, my robot will fly out and build it. And you'll see that there is like a kind of faint purple electrical line connecting these two. That means that this is part of my power grid and anytime you can left click on part of your grid to see how much power you're producing and this tells you the wind strength the current wind strength on this planet is 100 percent so wind turbines are a good idea here and this tells us how much power we're producing and how much of the power that we're producing is being used by the building so right now we're only using four percent of the total power that we're producing i'm going to right click uh periodically you see in the upper right there's a milestone the game just gives you awards and milestones for doing certain things and it's fun and you just right click that uh, to dismiss it so when you connect things to the grid they will distribute power all along the grid and anything that needs power can draw from it so it's a great way to build up your power and you don't have to worry like well I'm not producing enough electricity nearby this thing. As long as the grid the grid is getting power, you're good to go. All right, so now we're producing enough power. This is working, but you see how it's not moving. The fan is not moving. Resources aren't being produced, and that's because I'm going to right-click to quick construction mode. I'm actually not... This thing, if I left-click on it, you'll see that it's full of resources. So it's telling you that it's covering six veins but you see this orange circle right here with the number 50 this means it's already mined 50 ore and they're stored in the facility but it can't store anymore so if i actually just click on that left click on that i'll put it all in my backpack and then you'll see that it turns on and it's working and it's like this arrow is lighting up and moving from uh, right to left and it tells you how many per minute it's getting and everything's going great and if i click on the grid you could see our power load has changed because this is now on before we weren't really using very much power because the the mining facility wasn't on but now it is now it's using some of our power but you'll see that it's going to start slowing down because now very soon there's going to be no room left for this to gather so what we need to do is build a place for this to store the resources so that it will keep mining. 
So let's open up the tech tree in technologies and what we want, okay? Um, do we want metallurgy? Do we want electromagnetic magnetic maintenance or basic assembling? No, what I want is actually basic logistics, okay? So I'm gonna go up to the top right now. All of this you want, by the way. You wanna do all of this stuff. But I want logistics because this will give us conveyor belts, sorters, which are like inserters in Factorio. Um, they move items from facilities to conveyor belts. And then storage chests, which are the key right now. So I'm gonna activate this. You see it's gonna take 10 circuit boards and 10 gears. I'm gonna say activate. Now it's telling me I don't have the items that it wants. So how am I going to do this? Okay. Well, I'm going to do this by gathering what it takes. So you can double click on this and say I need to replicate. Okay. So unlike when you use the replicator to build an item, it will kind of build things up the tree. For research, you need to actually have these in your inventory. It won't just melt down your base materials into this for you. Okay. So what we need to do then is go ahead and produce. I need 10 circuit boards. So that means I need to do five iterations of this to get 10 because it makes two boards for one copper and two iron ingots. So I'll do this. And I made one, or I made um, some of rather, but uh, the problem is I don't have any more copper. So in order to do that, I'm gonna go need to actually gather copper. I'm gonna push escape. And I'm just going to look at the map, okay? And I can um, I can look at the power grid, but I can't see the veins just yet because I haven't researched it yet. But we'll get there eventually. Now, I'm going to... You notice how, by the way, I went to the detail display, which is this four box button in the lower right. This is what I'm researching right now. When you research something... In the center circle, it will kind of give you the icon of what you are researching. And it's the same as it's in my research queue. And if you push H, it just gives you like the option to turn things on and off that are displayed. So if I click on power grid, I could turn it off or I could turn it on just to see where my grid is. I like to have it off, but it's nice to just see where is my grid, what is being reached by electricity, um, you know, what's getting power, everything like that. And you can click to close this now. You'll see that this is a copper ore vein right here. I'm just gonna run over to it and I'm just gonna stand here and gather copper with my mecha. And now with copper, okay, in my inventory, I can make this these boards because I have raw iron ore that I can turn into ingots and I have raw copper ore now that I can turn into circuit boards. Keep Pay attention to how much this is draining my power. I'm both replicating and mining at the same time. Your mecha is incredible. It can do research. It can mine. Um, it can do all sorts of things simultaneously. All right. So now we've got the 10 boards. We need the gears. So let's go to the gears. And we need to make 10 of them. So I click 10x and click it once. And we're going to make this. I'm going to stop mining, by the way. I don't need that much copper. And you see that we're starting to make gears and here they go and as soon as i make one gear the research kicks in and starts happening okay and you can see that it tells you how many i have and how many i need and now once i have everything it's no longer red because i've got the stuff it just takes time and you can see the bar in the circle around the research queue filling up as i research basics logistics systems all right so i'm going to run over here and this is almost done And we're going to celebrate real soon. Boom. We did it. So we've unlocked logistics. So we get the conveyor belt, the sorter, and the storage chest. All right. So we're going to say, okay. You have received the sorter and the conveyor belt, which can achieve full automation now. Use the conveyor belt to transport the piled up ores from the mining machine. And the sorter can deliver the ores from the conveyor belt to the smelter for automatic smelting. Awesome. So he's telling us how to use the conveyor belt, okay, um, and the smelting facility as well. And also, I'm going to click on conveyor belt and sorter. There's a fuller tutorial that you can see 
You see the guidebook? This is where all these tutorials go. This populates as you learn things, and you can push G at any time to get back to these guides if you want further information. Okay? Now, let's just show you this in practice. So now you'll see that buttons 3 and 4, logistics and storage, have um, been illuminated on my HUD. I'm going to start researching again, and I need to go to smelting next. So I'm just going to say activate this process. And we're going to do some of it, but you see we don't have enough to finish it. Now, the first thing I want to do is go to logistics, and we want to build conveyors. But we actually got 20 for free, and let's just talk about how these work. So when you left-click conveyor belts, this kind of um, two concentric circles appear. And this is the starting position, all right? Now, if you select a facility and you highlight it when you are trying to build a conveyor it will show you the square that the conveyor will start when you click on it okay so right now the mining facility you see it's only going to come out that front square that's highlighted in white right by my mecca and you can clearly see that like on the graphic this is the output where it's going to come out so if i click on this okay and i start moving this away this is the path that my conveyor is going to take and you can see the kind of little bulbs moving in a direction. This is going to show which direction the conveyor belt will go. I'm just going to build this to right here just to show you. And you see my robots will come down and set the conveyor belt there. And immediately you could see that we've started automating. We got a milestone for doing so. And this conveyor belt is putting out the iron ore. Now that the iron ore is being freed up from this machine because it's on this belt, this can start filling up again. Now it's going to stop because we haven't completed the process. Notice that with a mining facility, you do not need a sorter to go from the, from the mining facility to the conveyor belt. It's built in. But if I want to build a storage unit, okay, I'm going to go to tab 4, which is storage, and select the storage unit, okay? I don't have any, so I need to replicate these. I'm going to go to buildings, and I'll build one of these. Uh, to get these, I need stone bricks, okay? So I need stones to build this, but that's okay because um, that's a crude oil seep. There's stones right over here. I'm just going to right-click this and go get some stone. There's also stone over here. So stone kind of looks like this. I'm just going to watch my dude walk. It's these, like, hexagonal protrusions from the ground is the stone. And we just need to get enough stone so that we can make ourselves a storage chest. And now we have one. I'm just going to make one for demonstration purposes. I'll mine a little bit while we do this. And it's almost done. And we got it. So now that it's done, I'm going to move away. Now I'm going to, while I walk back, uh, I'm going to kind of set a path here. While we're walking back, I'm going to show you our inventory again. Just push E to bring this up. By the way, you can left click and drag to move the windows around to wherever you want you can also click this button to sort the bank up um, or just control and click it to do this and notice that your inventory you can put each item can stack to a certain number based on what item type it is and there's no weight you can carry as many items as you want as long as you have free squares in your inventory and right now we have four rows of inventory um, that are 10 across. So we have an inventory right now of 40, but you can make this bigger. All right. So what I'm going to do at this point is build the storage chest. I'm going to select it and I'm going to put it right next to the conveyor belt. You'll see that when I'm trying to build this storage chest, it has these white boxes all around it in threes. Those are the locations that I can load into and out of with the chest. So if I put this right here, okay, you'll see that we've got a storage chest you down. Can storage, which can be used to store cargo. You can manually store or use the sorter to automatically stock the cargo. Correct. And so I can just click on this with left click and you'll see that a separate inventory window opens up here that says storage mark one, which is this box. And I can go ahead and say, you know what? I don't want to carry around these hydrogen fuel rods for whatever reason right now but in fact i'm just going to actually control click the logs the leaves over to the storage and manually put some items in here right now okay 
But what I want to do is automate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to logistics tab three, and I'm going to push F4 to select sorter. And I'm going to now build a sorter. What you need to do is tell it where to start. So I'm going to start it on the conveyor belt. You see how it's highlighted yellow. And then I'm just going to move my mouse until it goes over. You can move these sorters. Um, I could try to connect it over here, for example, but it's too far. And I'm just going to push it over to the storage facility. And you could see the arrow. The input arrow tells you how long it will take. Okay. 1.5 seconds to transport this. The closer the item is uh, to the, the belt. Or let me say this again. The shorter your sorter is, the faster it will go. So in this case, we built the storage chest as close to the conveyor belt as we possibly could to create the smallest sorter, which will allow us to transport these goods at the fastest speed. So now that I have this selected, you can see it blue ghosted incorrectly. I'm going to left click it and it will build this. And you'll see the orange arrow. Um, I'm going to right click to exit build mode. You'll notice that what's happening is this is filling up now. It's just the sorter is taking off the items from this conveyor belt and putting them in here and you can see it filling these up now this is something that's kind of unique to this game um it well not necessarily but it's a cool thing anyway you'll notice that when i click on this um or when i was building this if i click on the sorter and i left click right here to start another one you'll see how i can actually put another one here and speed up this process i could put another one over here this allows for three inputs and so i can speed up the rate at which iron is coming in here now you'll see that there's a graphic of this plant fuel that's displayed on top of the storage chest if i want okay um iron to be displayed instead it shows you whatever is in the first box okay so if i want to sort this by iron and just remember that this is mostly iron. I can do this, okay? Now, you'll notice how this sorter isn't working because it's not getting power. So if I want, I can push one, and then I can build a Tesla tower. And I'll show you this. The Tesla tower, you see how its area of influence is much larger than the wind turbine. It is good for distributing power. So I'm going to kind of put it right here. And now... This sorter from all the, the way over here. Transmission facility, Tesla Tower. It can carry out short distance wireless power transmission and expand the power supply area of the power grid. Click on it to view the current power grid information. So, like we did before, it's telling us about the power grid, right? And the power grid is great. Right now, we're getting 100% satisfaction. But you see this interior orange ring? This is showing you the consumption. And actually, this right here is taking just about 75% of the current power that we produce is being used by this miner. It's working at full speed across all nodes because it can't store anything because we're putting everything into this chest. And so because of this, it's taking a tremendous amount of power. Now, luckily, we have enough right now. Now, let's say you don't want to waste time or resources filling up this entire chest. You see how it says capacity for automation? You can actually, um, right now I have 30 slots in this. I can actually decrease this by just left clicking this and holding and dragging the mouse wheel left and right. And the red squares are telling me don't fill this up. So I could say, hey, only fill up this much with, uh, with items or whatever. Um, so I'm gonna put it like right Actually, there's no reason to stop it right now. I'm fine with this. But um, just for demonstration, I'll kind of block these two out. And now it says it's only going to use 28 of these 30 squares to hold stuff. So you can just kind of like minimize how much you draw off. And that can actually save you power. Like you could say, I only really want to keep like 200 ore on hand. So just take the top two stacks. That way it's not always drawing power if you want. All right. So we've done a ton so far in this introductory video to Dyson Sphere program in our beginner's guide. We've talked about movement, camera, the map, the UI. We've automated our first process. We've researched and we're doing a really good job, but we have a ton of work to do. Everyone, I hope you're finding this guide to be useful and informative so far. Please let me know if you have any questions about the game. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.